Everything you've been through creates who you are. And it can create who you are, or it can destroy and keep you where you were. But that's the choice yeah. of the individual. Yeah. I could have gone through that and completely held on to that scarcity yeah. and lack mentality, and I would still be huddled in a rental somewhere. And when I say it now, the thing that I hear in the back of my head, when I tell you three quarters of a million meals, it's mm -hmm. not come pat me on the back, mm -hmm. it's you ain't done enough, you ain't I done. Say it's not enough. Man. It's not enough. They're still hungry kids, they're still hurting widows, they're still hurting people that need mm -hmm. love, right? So yeah. it's not enough. There's Absolutely. always one more. All right, welcome to the Sales Wolves podcast. I am Joseph Caldwell, and how do you want, you want me to introduce you to? He's not ready. Yet. Did you just say Sales Wolves podcast? This is the Breadwinner podcast. This is our... <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's going on here today? So we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do a Breadwinner's podcast on the Sales Wolves podcast. My Podcast, gosh. podcast. It, does that mean that it's not really a podcast because it's a double podcast negative? Wait a minute. A double negative podcast? A double podcast? So does that Time erase zero itself? Zero. Time zero is zero. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. So bear with us because I'm going to do the intro here on the Breadwinner podcast. For those of you that have not subscribed to the best podcast on earth, it's fundamentally the biggest mistake you're making in life. To the MFCEO project. <laughs> oh, you're talking about yours? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. Dude, Come I on. love the Breadwinner podcast, especially your your last episode with Wendy. That yes. was the last episode, right? Yep. Dude, she's awesome. Posted another one this morning, but yeah, that was yesterday. It was awesome. Yeah, she's good. All right, so I'll play the intro here. Is this you rapping again? Right. Is this you rapping? No. no. Unless you like it, yeah. <laughs> Alright, so it's fine. You're, what did it say about you? Everything. All the good stuff. <laughs> All right, what's up everybody? This is the Breadwinner Podcast. I'm your host, Tyler Harris, and we have a very, 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 what word am I looking for? Special. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Guest in the house today. We are actually live recording the Sales Wolves Podcast as he is the co-host of that. Uh, but we got him on the Breadwinner Podcast on a Sales Wolves Podcast. So it's That's like a tongue a, twister. What did you say? What's the, you always say a riddle mixed in a... That's a riddle wrapped in an enigma. Yeah. Like that's <laughs> a mystery wrapped in a riddle inside an enigma. It is all that and more. And so, the shooter doesn't even know who killed Kennedy. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump right in. Uh, but we got Joseph Caldwell here. And um, a lot of you that have been following any of my content, um, you've heard me talk about these mentors that came into my life uh, three and a half years ago. Joseph was not way. one of them. Um, <laughs> but we're glad to have him here anyways. <laughs> Because he knows them. He knows them. So it's like... I know I knows of them. <laughs> Fucking talk about them. <laughs> no, but in all reality, Joseph has been one of the biggest mentors and person that's been instrumental in this transformation that I've gone through over the past few years. And um, I'm extremely grateful for that. I'm not going to look him in the eye when I say it. But um, it's a podcast, so you didn't see it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> you only heard him not look me in the eye. And you can only imagine I'm sitting here petting a skull. So we're... we're <laughs> we're going to do is we're going to give Joseph a couple of minutes just to introduce himself for those of you that have not gotten to meet him on the Sales Wolves podcast or on his social media yet. Um, but Joseph, tell everybody who you are, what you do, where you're from, um, anything Caldwell specific. From, Black Mountain, from a very small town, Black Mountain, North Carolina, and um, CEO of Consolidated Assurance. We run the First Responder Task Force and uh, across the country. Um, that's how we met, yep. but, uh, but man, a little bit about myself. I'm nothing special. There's nothing special about I've me. Already you, told them you've that. already, <laughs> you, you've already <laughs> graced them with that. But, uh, but that's what people don't understand is, is, is I have just realized where I wanted to go in life and what my purpose was and surround myself with people like that are similar mm -hmm. and wanting to go and do something special too. 
Um, you know, a lot of times people in my position, they talk about they pulled themselves up by their bootstrap and I'm never going to feed people that shit. Mm -hmm. I'm not a self-made man. Uh, I look around and everything, most, almost every decision I make, I've learned how to make that through mentors in my life. And so that's why it's such a special, it's a special thing when you look down and not look me in the eye and call me a mentor. <laughs> <laughs> Don't spit that coffee or water you just drank. But uh, but anyway, that's that's a little bit. Married, four children, and four, I love my kids. Love my wife. Um, I have three daughters, 15. Well, she's turning 15, but right now I have 14, 13, 12, and a 10-year-old. My son's 10. And uh, so those those fill up a good portion of my life, which I love. But, uh, but anyway, that's me. Awesome, man. So we're just going to jump right into the first question. So you and I both love this statement of the fact that every successful person has a painful story. And then the part we always tap onto the end where your painful story have a successful ending. So give us one of those. You've told me a few here lately that I hadn't heard before, uh, but give the, the listeners one painful story that happened for you, not to you, uh, that's made you who you are today. Um, what did I tell you that you hadn't heard? There was one recently that you were talking about. Oh, well, there was the one with Jeff talking last night at, or the other night at dinner about um, about the uh, lending the guy money and and having to go up. Oh, that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about that one. There's there's dented can <laughs> stories. There's dented can. Oh man, yeah, <laughs> freaking a. Yeah, so we had to, I mean, you know what? Everybody does what they have to do. Like, mm -hmm. I, I see people that are in situations and they don't have money and and you do what you have to do, right? And so we could not, and by we, you know, like I like to include my wife in the, we couldn't make it in those days. And then I like <laughs> to just say, I made it. No. <laughs> but no, we, I was, I, I couldn't, I couldn't cut it, man. I wasn't making the money and I was working three different three different things. I won't call them careers or jobs or I won't call them purpose driven anything. I was just working three different things. And, and so the way that we fed our four kids was there was a sidewalk sale outside of a grocery store in this area where they would literally sell boxes of, um, uh, retired food, expired, what do you call it? expired yeah, yeah. food. Yeah, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> See, I'm not that smart. <laughs> the food was retired um, <laughs> on a beach in the islands, but uh, the the food was expired, and and some of it, some of it, like six, eight months, two a year, year, two years expired. Yeah. But man, it was eight dollars a box. All right, and they had these in rows, and probably probably two hundred people that were poor as shit like me would show up at the same time. And, uh, and, and they would, you couldn't go until they blew a whistle. <laughs> Did I tell you this part? This was also filmed. It was a reality TV show. Dude, I'm telling you, man, you couldn't, you couldn't go. And so what I would do is I'd get there early and I'd pace around the whole area and see where I could see stuff that I knew mm -hmm. I could feed my kids. Right. Yeah. And, uh, and stuff that, stuff that probably would like cereal is not going to go bad. If I could get, you know, mm -hmm. 15 boxes of this obscure cereal that nobody on God's green earth wanted, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. Like that was a win. And the boxes were eight bucks a box. And so literally my, my oldest can still remember because I take her, hmm. she was probably five, six at the time. And, uh, and, and, and Kim and me and our five, six, seven year old would, would get, and we would point out the one she had to get. <laughs> And, and Kim and I would have our eyes on the one and for real, like people would, would get a box and they would start putting like, Oh, let's take this out of this box. But like they were shopping, yeah. Oh yeah, dude, I karate chopped them old people in the throat <laughs> and I would grab a box, put it on top of another box, put it on top of another box. <laughs> and I would tote three at a time over to our space. And so sometimes we'd put our kid guard in the space, right? Because mm -hmm. people would try to come, come snatch shit out your box and oh, yeah. I'd go and knock some old lady out, you know, that was probably on, you know, a, you know, fixed income and wasn't mm -hmm. making it herself. But when you're in that situation, you can't really care about what yeah. other people are going through because sure. you only care what you, you can't, you can't focus on anyone else when you're, when you're not making it. When the wolves are at your door, you don't care about the guy on the street where the wolves are devouring him. Yeah. You can't, yeah. you can't because in that fear and anxiety place, it shuts down all of your frontal lobe and you mm -hmm. act out of instinct. You want to, you got to make it. So literally, I would get probably six to 10, 12 boxes hmm. and, uh, and we would go back and, and, and our kids thought it was 
Christmas every <laughs> Saturday, man. We would line this stuff up and section it all out, and that's how we ate. That's how I'm we just, ate. I'm man. envisioning your daughter when everybody's standing in line waiting for this whistle, just kind of crawling around, tying everybody's shoelaces yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> and then blow the whistle, everybody's tripping, tripping over them. You know, I went back. I went back when I didn't have to go back. We yeah. still did it for several, because it's hard. It's hard to let go of those, right? Because mm -hmm. you're. Because you're in a scarcity mindset, it's hard to let go of that yeah. scarcity mindset. Yeah. So we would go back, and I would still buy them. But when I would go and buy boxes <laughs> this time, I'd be like, "Hey, pay for all these people's boxes yeah. too." Because I know I was a I was a jerk in the beginning. I was like, mm -hmm. "Look, I'm faster than you. <laughs> I'm going to beat you to that box." Like people are like, "Oh, I've got that box there," and I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> you better be quick off the line, buddy." <laughs> but that's uh, awesome. but that's that's one of the many stories you know yeah. that I could tell. And so let's talk about that real quick and kind of unpack the, the responsibility aspect of that because you explained that when you were in that situation, you couldn't even not only take responsibility for the people around you, but it was you couldn't even think about those around you because you were worried about taking responsibility for yourself at that point. Yep. And so now, fast forward, how many years? A lot of that years. Probably, probably eight, nine, ten. ten. Um, so fast eight, forward nine, ten, ten years. Um, where now you do have the ability to take care of obviously yourself, yeah. your family. What does that look like for you now in that you are aware of things that are still going on around you, but now you're able to actually take that breath and look to yep. your left and right and take care of those? Sure, man, it started um, probably, I've always been a giver. Mm -hmm. Like people hear me talk about looking out for yourself and all that stuff and they think I'm really selfish mm -hmm. sometimes because they just don't understand that, that if you're if if you're yeah. not if if you don't take care of yourself and you're not healthy you don't have oxygen the you don't empty, have food there's nothing to give there's nothing to give yeah you can give them a big pile of uh, you can give yeah. them a firm grip on an empty sack <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> I mean yeah. but uh, but but so what it looks like now man um, we feed because let me let me tell you man there's people on the surf that they got to make the decision between buying their medicine and buying food that month mm -hmm. they're on fixed incomes a lot of older people there and uh, and. And look, I could throw stones and say, well, you should have done this or you should have done that. Hell, I don't know. I may be there someday. Mm -hmm. So I hope there's a me that will take care of me someday. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Like, oh, they will yeah. look out for someone else. And so, but you can only do that out of the overflow in your life. And so we, we between feedings and Nicaragua, between building and wells and, and digging wells and, and the feeding, I don't want to say feeding station, but the, mm -hmm. but the food ministries in yeah. South Carolina, North Carolina, um, we do over three quarters of a million meals a year now. Mm -hmm. And um, and we also, last year we were integral in, in rescuing over 6,000 kids out of slavery. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and Which still and, exists. Which still exists on this earth. People don't understand. The numbers, the numbers are, are somewhere around, 100, there's 100,000 slaves in the United States. Oh, yeah. Like all these people are arguing over all this stuff in the media, mm -hmm. when this should be the highlight in every story is how do we destroy that, mm -hmm. right, and free people. Atlanta is one of the biggest hubs. Atlanta not too far from is us. the biggest hub, yeah, yeah for sex trafficking yeah. for little girls and little boys too. <clears throat> but um, rescued those. We do. Um, we have some college ministry stuff, some prison stuff that we do. Uh, but it's but. All in all, man, it's it's absolutely fascinating to see now mm -hmm. that I don't even we don't have to think about that yeah. stuff. Like we just do it. We just do it, and it's not just something we throw money at. You're going yeah. with us this year. We're going to mm -hmm. take off, and we're going to go get our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. Because here's the thing: you can just throw money at something. That's one thing. Yeah. But if you take your time, mm -hmm. because see, I make money work for me. Yeah. But my time. And the breath that I just took is the most valuable thing to me on this earth because mm -hmm. I know I'm one down until I die, yeah. right? And so where I spend my time is magnanimously valuable to me. And so we're going down to actually love on people. So I feel like, you know, I, you know, I don't get into a lot of spiritual stuff and, and religious stuff, but I feel like if you're operating in love mm -hmm. and you're doing something out of the love in your heart for somebody, that you're actually operating at the highest frequency that you can operate and success, mm -hmm. things pull to you at that yeah. point. Um, you know, it says that God is love, right? Mm -hmm. And I believe that if we're operating in love, then we're operating in our God-like power. Yeah. Like it's it's Excellent. it's just a fact. Like I'm rough around the edges and stuff, mm -hmm. which you're probably more aware than most. <laughs> but, uh, but man, I, I truly believe that. 
So have you ever, I mean, I know you have, but how often do you think back and, I mean, 10 years is nothing to some. It's a long time if you're 12. If you're 12, it's a long time. <laughs> but 10 years is very fast. Mm -hmm. And to think of going from being being on the receiving end of of these things and then 10 years later being able to not only be financially and being stable in all areas of your life, but being able to then not just help a couple of families, but you're talking about hundreds of oh, thousands yeah. of meals that you're now able to provide other people. I mean, how do you, how do you even process that? I mean, do you think that it was because of going through that 10 years ago that made you more aware of like, now that I have been blessed, I can be a blessing? Everything you've been people. through, everything you've been through creates who you are. Yeah, that's just it, and and it can create who you are, or it can destroy and keep you where you were. Mm -hmm. but that's the choice yeah. of the individual. Yeah. I could have gone through that and and completely held onto that scarcity yeah. and lack mentality, and I would still be huddled in a rental somewhere, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and uh, and so. It's it's the person's choice to make that decision, but yeah, man, that's uh. And I look at it now, and and when I say it now, the thing that I hear in the back of my head when I tell you three quarters of a million meals, it's mm -hmm. not come pat me on the back. Mm -hmm. It's you ain't done enough. You ain't I'm done. Say it's not enough. Man. It's not enough. It's not enough. They're still hungry, kids. Right? They're still hungry, kids. They're still hurting widows. They're still they're still um, they're still hurting people that need mm -hmm. love. Right? So yeah. it's not enough. There's always one more. So what's one thing during that transition period of the last 10 years that you quit doing that enabled you to succeed or enabled you and put you in a position to succeed? What's one thing that you just quit doing? Quit beating myself up. Okay. I quit beating myself up, man. I quit, I quit looking in the mirror and, and hating who I was. Mm -hmm. And when I started appreciating me and loving me, everything is, it's like the doors that I thought were locked weren't even there. Hmm. It's like they weren't even there. It's, it, it's, the story seems, and you know, you know from what I made to what I make. Mm -hmm. And it's staggering. Yeah. But to me, it's, it's, uh, it's, it was all a it was all a byproduct of forgiveness, love, but it all started here. Mm -hmm. It all started inside me. It didn't start. It didn't start. I didn't look out and go, "Well, I forgive you, Dad, for beating mm -hmm. the crap out of me." Mm -hmm. No, I, I have done all that stuff, but yeah. I forgave me first, right? Mm -hmm. So, what's one misconception now that people may have of you, the ten year later you, that? that you would want to set straight. So people that meet you now or that know you now that don't know the backstory, what's a misconception that they could have about you that you'd like to set straight? Um, man, I not don't know. Not knowing that backstory, not knowing all that you just went through. Oh, all the yeah. That people, been. Anytime you're successful, anytime you can drive what you want, live where you want, do what you want, pay for what you want, travel how you want, anytime you can do that, people look at that. And, and, and they see it through the eyes of their own pain, mm -hmm. right? So they see it through the eyes of their own, what I call crap colored glasses. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's, it's their emotional baggage. That's yeah. what they see it through. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, I've put stuff on social media and people will be like, oh, that's easy for you to say, you're the CEO and this and you need. <laughs> and oh yeah, it's real hard to get in cold water. You're in a million dollar house with a pool in the backyard, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah, I mean, yeah. it's, it's it, sure. so it's comical to mm -hmm. me, right? It's comical. But, but they just don't know the story, so I don't, I don't hold it against them. Mm -hmm. Like when they first started doing it, I was like answering them and stuff, yeah, and, then yeah. I, and then I just went, man, I hope that person starts liking themselves. Mm -hmm. They'll quit hating everybody around them when they start liking themselves. Talk a little bit about, you've, you've discussed lately within our organization about this idea of being all on and all off. And I know that's kind of a renewed focus that you have now yeah. in that over this 10 year period in order to change and in order to transform in, in the way that you have, it's taken an insane amount of work. Mm -hmm. And talk about now this renewed focus of what's that worth if the family piece isn't together right. and if you don't have that time 100% off and that 
why some people are stuck in the middle there. Mm -hmm. So, two, two guys, Sean Whalen, which he's coaching me personally. Mm -hmm. I love that guy. You're familiar with him. Yeah. And, and Tom Shea. Mm -hmm. um, I actually just had coffee with Tom Shea, and, and we were talking about that very concept of being, because being, my thing is be on, be off, and I'm talking about work, like yeah. be all the way on at work, but you could look at it a couple different ways. You could, that when you're on at work, you are sick focused. Mm -hmm. And then when you're on with your relationships, your spouse, kids, family, friends, when you're on there, you're sick focused there. Mm -hmm. Most people don't know how to focus. Yeah. And it was funny, I was talking with Tom this morning, he said that's because they don't know how to be off in between, the space in between. They need to be off mm -hmm. so that they can then go boom and be on. Yeah. Because humans can't be on all the time. Yeah. Like you can't just go be on here, on here, on here, on here, on here, or you'll be dead there. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> you know? And so it's uh but it's a thing that most people, you know, you and I see it all the time. Most people don't know how to work hard. Yeah. They don't even know what hard work is. Yeah. They bought some kind of uh, story early on. So so they they're well, I was there from nine to four and I gave it a I gave it a, a good <laughs> Jimmy go at it or something, you know what I'm saying? It's ridiculous. You're yeah. like, you did what? <laughs> like I don't comprehend that. You you have a job, you finish it. Mm -hmm. Like, finish it. Was that thirty minutes or did it take you three weeks yeah. of no sleep? I don't care. Yeah. But then you're, but then you're off, and you're really good at being off, or what I like to say, being on with family, or yeah. on. And you gotta, you gotta learn what makes you happy. I saw this thing about Will Smith the other day. It was so cool. He was talking about him and his, him and his spouse, mm -hmm. Jada, right? Yeah. Um, he said that they, they, they kept trying to make each other happy. That's impossible. Hmm. You are responsible for your own happiness. Yeah. So when you show up in the relationship and you bring happiness, he goes, he goes, I retire. He goes, I'm absolutely done trying to make you happy. <laughs> he goes, never again will I try to do that. I'm going to make me happy, and I'm going to bring happiness to you. Hmm. And it was really fascinating, man. And now they're tight as tight can get. Huh. It was cool. That's awesome. And so it's almost, it seems like even as of like today, it's, it's almost morphed into not just all on, all off. It's how you're all on, all on, but it's how you're off between the yeah. ons to make sure that, because a lot of people, they just don't, um, it's, you said focus, but they're not intentional. Yeah. Like when they're at work, they may be intentional, but at home, it's not an intentional time that's yeah. spent to where they're almost looking at it as a business, like a return yep. on investment of the right. time that they're spending um, with the family. That's interesting. Take it off. So, so your off may be different than my off, right? Yeah. I can pull into the garage and I, I see, you know, I listen to every kind of music known to man, mm -hmm. but I can pull into, but I love Hamilton now. I've gone twice to New York and, mm -hmm. and seen and Kim, you know, we have a ball, but I will flip on King George's song <laughs> in Hamilton <laughs> where he's, he's so freaking funny. And, and I might throw a dip in and sing that to the top of my lungs. That's my off. Like I get out of the truck and I'm like, I'm freaking happy. <laughs> like this is awesome. And, uh, and, and so it, it may be that, or it may be, it may be for me pulling, not going straight home after mm -hmm. I've been on crazy at work, but pulling up to a lake somewhere and just sitting there in the grass or for me getting in cold water, exposing myself to extreme, extreme temperatures. Mm -hmm. That's my off. Yeah. That's my off like that. That centers me, and then I and then I can go be on again. I go play basketball with my son and go enjoy mm -hmm. the video games he likes, and go talk with my daughters about all the sundry stuff that preteens and teens <laughs> talk about. And, and guess what? My daughter asked me yesterday. Uh, I'm scared to ask. Will you take? This is the 13 year old. She said, and it was about her and the 15, 14 year old that's turning 15. She said, "Daddy, will you take us driving this Saturday?" And I was like. <laughs> <laughs> Come again? Oh no! That's scary. And I was like, okay, I will. And then I was thinking, whose car am I gonna let him drive? <laughs> <laughs> That's a the golf cart. <laughs> That's not a bad idea, yeah, actually. Really. Teach him to drive a golf cart first. That's a good idea. Can, yeah. I, can we do that? <laughs> Paint some lines in the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Stay between the lines. She goes, Daddy, please make it a parking lot where they don't have those pole thingies. I was like, the light post? She was like, yeah, I don't want any of those around. <laughs> that's awesome. Put them on the motorcycle. Uh, yeah, that's safe. <laughs> <laughs> so last, last question. 
one day, long, 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 hopefully, long, 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 long time from now, um, on your headstone, what do they call it, an epitaph? Is that what it's called? If it were to say someone randomly I threw from my voice over there, did <laughs> someone, you hear that? Did you hear that? Someone randomly just answered that question. Did you, I, I am good at that. I'm a ventriloquist in my off dime, right? Really? There is no TJ. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't exist. I don't know. I throw my voice into him. So, <laughs> He's just so like it'll have spoon. one phrase on the headstone. It'll say, here lies Joseph Caldwell. Joseph A. Caldwell? Mm -hmm. Andrew. That's what I thought. He was... Contrary to popular blank. belief, it doesn't stand for asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure. So here lies Joseph Caldwell. He was blank. What's the blank? All in. All in? What's all good? in. In every area, man. All in. Did you know that was mine? Was it? Yeah. I don't even like you, though. <laughs> That's literally, it's, it's mine, yeah. Was it really? Yeah. Exactly. All in, man. All in. I want anybody to read it and go, because I want to be able to read it. I want my mm -hmm. spouse to stand there and go, Joseph Caldwell was all in with me. Mm -hmm. I want my kids to go, Joseph Caldwell, daddy was all in with me. Mm -hmm. You know? Arden, to sit there and look at yours and go, man, my yeah. dad was all in with me. Right? Absolutely. Business partners, I want you to stand there, although I'll be looking at yours way before you look at mine. <laughs> but I want you, I would want you to stand there <laughs> and, and go, he was all in. Yeah. He was all in. So tell people where they can find you on social media. The CEO of Change. We just changed the branding of yes. that. So CEO of Change, man. Um, so what's the, what are the uh, handles for that? Yeah, what are the handles for that? Is it still like CEO Joseph of Cole? Change? Okay. And uh, I guess so they at, just so switched it's it at over. CEO of change? At everything. Okay. Everything is at CEO. Did you just say it's, it's at everything? It's at everything. But it's at CEO of change on Facebook, Instagram. Awesome. All right. So they changed the tags on Facebook too? Oh, perfect. Man. Good. Getting stuff Except done. Except your website. Website's What's that? still the Joseph Caldwell. The Joseph Caldwell. Yeah, it's the website. Got the it. The Joseph Caldwell. That cam. Last question: Who is one person that you would want to hear on the Breadwinner podcast? God, um, him too. Who? God. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what I can do. I see. Let's see if you can pull that string. Audio is not coming in right now. <laughs> Maybe TJ can. <could> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> could summon him. <laughs> um, one person I would love to hear on the Breadwinner podcast, if it was possible, um, Leif Erickson. Okay. He's the Viking that discovered America. Exactly. You need to study history no more. Idea who that is. <laughs> um, <laughs> he missed Iceland and just kept rolling. Um, nah, let's see, man. Oh, you know who I want to hear? And I'm 100% you hadn't had him. What's the guy that we heard talk down in? Tom Ferry? Tom Ferry. That's, That's who I want to hear. That's a good idea. That guy is on it. Mm -hmm. He is on it, man. That's a great idea. I would love to hear Tom Ferry. He's got, he dropped more notes. I took more notes on yeah. that cat. Golly, I took a lot of notes. Yeah, he's incredible. I think he said that, I think, or he didn't say it because it would be weird for him to say, but. Um, someone said, I think, of the top 25 realtors. I was of the top 50. He coaches 15. Yeah, and like I think like all the top five or something. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, that's uh, Realtors in the country. That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway. And Tom, you have been called out. Yes. So it's, 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 <laughs> it's time to be on the podcast. It's time to be on the Breadwinner Podcast. So with that, guys, that is the Breadwinner Podcast. Again, I'm your host, Tyler Harris. Extremely grateful to have Joseph Caldwell here live in studio, also on the Sales Wolves podcast. So those of you that are hearing this on the Breadwinner podcast, make sure you check out the Sales Wolves podcast. Just search Sales Wolves on iTunes. It's also a video version on YouTube. So if you go to YouTube, you can search Sales Wolves podcast and check us out on video if you want to see how handsome Joseph is in real life, not just his voice. Mm. But, uh, <laughs> until next time, <laughs> we will talk to you then. All right. And right. we are done with the 58th episode mm. of the Sales Wolf Podcast. I am Joseph Caldwell. Tyler Harris. And we are the Sales Wolves. Oh!